So there are labels that tell you to unfold the rear arms first and then the front arms. So let's unfold the arms. Here's the rear arm and here's the front arms. Here's the rear arms and here's the front arms and vice versa when you are folding it back in, of course. So it has the staggered arm formation where the front arms are higher than the rear arms but the motors are at the same height due to the slightly raised rear motors. So therefore, the props are spinning at the same height as well. And that is important because if it wasn't, some of the dirty airflow from the higher situated props will be hitting the top of the lower situated props, causing unstable flight at times. And notice, on the bottom of the body is where the landing pads are located instead of on the bottom of each of the motor pods. And that is due to the raised motor on the rear arms. The arms will not be able to fold in in either direction if they were landing gear underneath of the front motors. So they chose to place the motors at the same height to increase flight performance over landing performance with this design. So landing on a flat surface is recommended to stick that landing. Also on the bottom are a couple of super bright, clear LED lights to shine directly below itself. Perfect for night flights when you need to see where it is landing, whether it is by line of sight or via the Wi-Fi FPV on your smart device. It also has a vision positioning camera or the optical flow sensor camera for a non-GPS position hold, especially for indoor flights where you should not be using GPS. Now, I am not so sure about what is inside of the grill here, but it could just be for some heat dissipation to keep itself cool. In the front, we have the 0 to 90 degree remote tilt adjustable 4K Sony censored electronic image stabilization assisted 5G Wi-Fi FPV camera with a field of view of 130 degrees that is also anti-jello mounted. Now the maximum distance of the 5G Wi-Fi FPV transmission is set to be 500 meters, which will depend on the smart device being used for the Wi-Fi FPV. And to record the captured 3840 by 2160 pixel 4K video or photo stills, we have a built-in DVR that supports up to a 128 gigabyte micro SD card. A class 10 or above micro SD card is recommended here. But without a micro SD card inserted, it will record 1920 by 1080 pixel resolution photos and 1280 by 720 pixel resolution videos to the Wi-Fi phone app and thus to your camera roll. Now the live view from the phone app is set to be 1080p at 60 frames per second. So if you are screen recording from your device, it will be of higher resolution than the phone app recorded video itself. And the recorded video to the DVR, thus to the micro SD card, is 4K at 30 frames per second. In the rear, we have the battery bay, and the battery that is provided is a 7.4 volt, 2,800 milliamp size battery, good for about 23 minutes of flight time. And it does come with an extra battery for a total combined flight time of 46 minutes. There are four LED lights in the rear above the battery bay to indicate the level of charge remaining in the battery. There are also status indicator LED lights on the bottom of each of the arms. So to push in the battery, just push it right in and it will lock into place. And to take the battery out, push the button on the bottom of the battery to unlock it and pull the battery out. It comes with a double battery bay charging station to charge 
two batteries at the same time, but it does take a whopping five hours to charge up the batteries. Once the batteries are fully charged, the green LED lights will go solid as it is right now, but while it is charging, the green LED lights will be blinking. The transmitter is the same as the one that comes with the Holy Stone HS510, so it is familiar. It is set to have a control distance of 999 meters with the HS720E. But the HS510 has been tested and it will go a whopping 1,363 meters when it was supposed to have just 600 to 800 meters on paper. So I'm expecting this transmitter with the HS720E to go beyond the 999 meters. It has fold out antennas, but just the one on the left is a functioning antenna and the antenna on the right is a non-functioning antenna. There are hand grips that also fold out for a comfortable grip and there's also a pull out phone holder on the top for your smart device. We have the power on and off sliding switch. We have the lock and unlock button to arm and disarm the motors, short press to arm and long press to disarm. A long press while the quadcopter is in the air disarms the motors as well and acts as an emergency stop switch. One key to take off and land here and smart return to home here, LCD display in the center. And on the right side of the transmitter, there is a switch to turn the GPS functions on or GPS functions off. On the left shoulder, we have a rotary dial knob, which is non-functional. We have the photo button, short press to take a photo and long press to take a video. And on the right shoulder, we have a functional rotary dial knob that adjusts the camera tilt angle from zero to 90 degrees. There's a dual functioning button, short press to activate and deactivate the super bright white LED light, long press to change speeds from low to high and high to low. Once paired and connected, the compass calibration is prompted with two beeps automatically, but if you need to manually calibrate the compass, both sticks to the bottom and to the right will activate the compass calibration prompt with the two beeps as well. Now, both sticks to the bottom and to the left will calibrate the gyros of the HS720E. Now, remember to place the HS720E on a flat level surface for the gyro calibration. All right, so let's power up the quadcopter. The ESCs have sung their song. Now let's power up the transmitter. Automatic bind. All right, double beeps indicating compass calibration time. But as you can see, we have solid red LEDs in the front arms and solid dark green LEDs in the rear arms indicating it does not need to be calibrated or it doesn't need to have compass calibration done because I've already done a compass calibration in this location before. So it has a memory that is a good thing. So you don't have to constantly do compass calibration if you are flying and taking off from the same spot. But for this demonstration, we're gonna initiate a compass calibration by moving the sticks to the bottom position and to the right. Double beeps again, indicating compass calibration. So now you see that there is a light green LED flashing from front to rear. So it is telling me it is ready for compass calibration. So what you wanna do is rotate it horizontally, either clockwise or counterclockwise until the light green LEDs turn dark green LEDs. So let's go ahead and rotate it. And there you go, dark green LEDs. So horizontal compass calibration is complete. And now we need to do vertical compass calibration in which you can do that by nose up or nose down, either rotating it clockwise or counterclockwise. So I'm gonna 
do it with the nose down clockwise until the front LEDs turn solid red and rear LEDs turn solid green or either blinking green. And there we go. So I got solid red LEDs in the front and solid dark green LEDs in the rear. So compass calibration is complete. And also the GPS acquirement is complete as well as indicated by 10 GPS satellites or 11 GPS satellites that has been acquired. If the necessary GPS satellite hasn't been acquired, the rear lights will be blinking. So if the rear lights are blinking, you are not able to arm the motors until the rear lights go solid green. If the GPS on the transmitter is turned on, but if the GPS on the transmitter is turned off, you are able to arm the motors and take off, even though the rear green light is still flashing. You will not, however, have GPS functions. So if you decide to take off without GPS and want to set the home point soon after when the rear lights turn solid green in the air, you will need to land the quadcopter and retake off from the spot you want to be set as the home point and turn the GPS switch to the on position. So every time you land and rearm the motors and take off, that new spot will become the new home point. So to calibrate the gyros, both sticks to the bottom and to the left will initiate the gyro calibration as indicated by flashing green lights. And once it is complete, it will go solid red in the front and solid green in the rear. So now you are ready to take off. Now to arm the motors, short press the lock button. To disarm the motors, long press the lock button. Now if you have a micro SD card inserted, short pressing of the photo button will snap a photo. As indicated by a flash of the camera icon on the LCD display. Now if you want to take a video, long pressing on the photo button will take a video. And that is indicated by a constant flashing photo icon on the LCD display. Now the super bright white LED light on the bottom of the quadcopter will not turn on until the motors are armed. Nothing is happening. So arming the motors and the white LED light will turn on and you can also turn it off. Now there is a limited amount of time for you to take off and the motors will turn off. That is a safety precaution. So here we have speed number two and speed number one indicated by one beep and speed number two indicated by two beeps. Now the camera can be adjusted with the rotary dial from zero to 90 degrees. All the way down to 90 degrees and all the way up horizon to zero degrees. All right, here we go. The compass has been calibrated. The gyro has been calibrated and I have 13 satellites. So let's go ahead and arm the motors. There we go. One key to take off. All right, comes to a nice little hover. Nice. Oh, look at that. It just yaws in one single spot there. All right, let's check it out here. Looks like I got GPS turned on, so let's check out the GPS. There you go, it goes right back to its original position. So let's go ahead and check it out here. Okay, I think this might be speed number two. Okay, so let's check it out. 
Okay, now we are in speed number one. Yeah, that is the speed, maximum speed with the full pitch on speed number one. Very mild, good for taking photos and videos. All right, let's let it hover there. I'm gonna go ahead and start my app, go into the settings. And I'm already connected to the Holy Stone EIS Wi-Fi network. Starting up the app. And that's how the app looks like. It's called Ophelia Go. And look at how steady it is just hovering there. GPS position hold. Hit start. Hit start. And click. And we got Wi-Fi FPV. Let me screen record. Three, two, one. There we go. Screen is recording. And oh yeah, look at that. Nice looking video. Very nice. Take some photos. All right. Screen flipped over, letting you know you're taking a photo with the phone app. Okay, let me take a photo with the hard remote, and there you go, screen flipped over again. And one more time, there we go, all right. Very nice, let me go ahead and start the video. And there's a counter, so let's go and check this thing out a little bit more. Oh yeah, looks really nice and smooth. very nice and smooth that electronic image stabilization is helping out a lot seems like oh my very nice okay first things first let me go ahead and bring it in let me change speed to speed number two okay and check out speed number two here real quick and there you go that is speed number two pretty cool eh let me bring it right in front of me here and i can see myself let me raise it up in altitude so i cannot see myself and let me tilt the camera angle down there you go all the way down to 90 degrees looking straight down to the ground and all the way up oh yeah nice although it just has one speed motor it is not proportional so you just get one speed of tilt action all right let me go ahead and bring it in and land it to establish the home point because I took off from the table here we have 23 minutes of flight time so that should be plenty enough so let's go ahead and bring it down and hover right here and hit the one key to land and you can still redirect this path with the pitch and roll to where you want to land and there you go yeah I landed pretty close to the center of the landing pad here so that will be our new home point so let's go ahead and arm the motors from here and one key to take off so from the ground that is the height that it comes to and hovers very nice okay let's check out the super bright LED lights there you go yeah, you can see that light from far away. It is so bright. And at night, it should be really, really bright. There you go. But I'm going to turn it off to save some battery power. All right. So we are flying with a GPS. So 
so let's see now let's fly without GPS so flicking the switch up and it is starting to drift a little bit but it does have that optical flow sensor for the vision positioning system for horizontal positioning letting go of the stick and look at that it's almost like it's got GPS pitching forward letting go it doesn't just start cruising it actually slows down Wow so that's kind of good in a way and that's kind of bad in a way you can't really smoothly slow down look it's like it's got GPS so you still get that bump when you let go of your sticks so you gotta remember to gently relax your pitch stick when you want to slow down there you go it still has that bump wow so speed 2 is pretty nice but man that speed 1 is just oh that's not the speed long press so speed number one is just a slow cruiser. Am I in speed number one? Yeah, now it's speed number two. Okay. Back to speed number one. Okay. Oh yeah, it's pretty slow. Well, it's pretty fast actually. It seems like speed number one seems like it's speed number two now okay let me slow it down here okay I'm going to go back to GPS position hold all right oh speed number one on GPS position hold is really really slow but once you turn off GPS, even though you are in speed number one, it's still almost as if it's speed number two. And if you let go of the sticks, it's a little bit better. It's still got optical flow positioning. Unbelievable. Okay, now we got GPS position hold. So we can do our special features here. And it is in speed number one. So let me go to speed number two because it is just way too slow. But that is interesting. It slows down. Okay. So we got ourselves right above and in the front. And let me lower it down. I got myself in the center. So let's check out some of the special features here. Like follow me. Okay. Let's see if it does follow you. Is it working? No, it does not follow. Let me redo that. Okay, now it's got me. I can see that the icon turned green, so I guess you gotta wait for that. And yeah, it is following me. But it is kind of jerky. It's not very smooth. It rocks back and forth. And I think it's losing me. It kind of doesn't know where I am and it does not keep myself in the center of the frame. It kind of has to wait until I go to the side of the frame in order to follow. So that is follow me for you. Okay, so to get out of the follow me, you gotta hit that icon again. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and check out the circle me here. Circle me and swipe. Okay, so it is circling on my location. There we go. 
So it's just circles at a preset radius. Not quite circling around the remote control or the phone. Let me raise it up here so I can see myself. Okay, so let me get out of circle me by hitting the icon again. Okay, so follow me and circle me works. Now let's see here. We got headless mode in the app and not on the hard remote. So headless mode. Okay, so I'm pushing it and it's going to the northbound heading and I'm pulling it and it's coming to the southbound heading. It doesn't matter which way the quadcopter is facing. That is headless mode. So if I'm pushing it, yeah, it's going that way, as you can see. And I'm pulling it, and it's coming this way. And if I go to the left, and if I go to the right, it will go to the left and right. Okay, it seems like it has come out of the headless mode. Yeah, and I didn't touch any buttons. I guess it automatically takes you out of headless mode. So that's pretty cool. You can use headless mode for a while. And then it takes you out of headless mode. So that is interesting. Alright, so let's check out the waypoints by clicking here. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay quadcopter is there and I'm over here so I want to make it go that way and then go back this way so I'm gonna hit a point there and a point here and hit execute and slide so will you work no it is not working okay let me get out here all right one more time Waypoint here, waypoint there, and a waypoint here. Execute and slide. There you go. Second time's a charm. There you go. Going to waypoint number one. And turning around. And heading towards waypoint number two. And... It stopped. Just two waypoints. It didn't execute the third waypoint here. Hmm. Let me do that one more time, but this time I'm going to draw a line. Okay, so a bunch of waypoints and hit execute and slide the bar. Will you work? No, it does not want to work. Again, once more. Execute. And slide the bar. Nope. Nope. This time it doesn't want to work. So it is a little finicky here. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So let's go ahead and check out the smart return to home by hitting this return to home button. See what happens, rises up in altitude. Comes back, backwards. It doesn't turn around. And it should land pretty close to the landing pad since we took off from the landing pad. And there's a huge airplane passing by. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, it is slowly descending. Very nice, nice and smooth. You guys can probably see that airplane way back yonder there. And comes to a hover at this altitude and slowly comes down. Okay, looks like I'm gonna have to move it. Ooh, almost hit that little bush. So very close to the center of the landing pad, but you are still able to 
move the quadcopter while it's descending. So let's go ahead and arm the motors once again. Let me get out of the map view. There you go. One kid to take off. Okay, so when the quadcopter is coming back with the smart return home, and let's go ahead and do it again. I can exit the return to home either by throttling up or hitting the return to home button once more. Okay, let me throttle up. And there you go. Yeah, it exits the return to home. All right, let's check out the fail safe return to home this time. And I'm going to do that by turning off the remote control. Turn off the remote. Let's see how long it takes to respond. Usually about six seconds. And there you go, starting to rise up. And it is heading its way back. And it will come to a landing. I'm going to go ahead and reconnect, hopefully. It's descending. Let me hit that return home button. And check it out. I have regained control of the quadcopter. So that is awesome. Very nice. All right. Let's go and see if we can do some FPV here. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna turn this way and head towards the 100 meter bush. And there you go, right there somewhere. Should be the 100 meter bush. Okay, where are you at, 100 meter bush? Yeah, it's right there. It is now 150 meters, by the way. So there's the 150 meter bush and let me go up in altitude and head on towards the end of the road. Video is going in and out. I got it back. It is continuing to go and it says it's not connected on the top with the red. So yeah, Wi-Fi all depends on what kind of device you got here. And it has activated the return to home. And I still have three bars remaining on the aircraft battery level indicator. So is it returning to home? Yeah, I lost connection like very quick. Looks like it's supposed to be returning to home, but I don't see it and I don't hear it. Oh, there it is. throttle up and I've retaken control that wasn't very far guys so I'm gonna go ahead and stand up and give it the benefit of the doubt and check it out one more time here heading towards the road and I'm continuing to go I still got video Looks like it kind of stuttered and I still got connection at 200 meters on the bottom of the screen. You can see the distance and yeah, I got, I had yellow and now it's yellow, uh, red, red and I had yellow now. So the connection is not very good. And guess what? The yellow indicates that I have two bars remaining on the uh, aircraft battery level indicator. That means we are in first phase of low voltage return to home so it should be coming back yeah and it is closing in at 100 meters and i can hear it now and in the first phase it's supposed to come back and hover above where it took off from and stay there and not come down so you can still fly around and there you go hovering right above the takeoff spot so you can retake control of it and still fly around so that will occur if you were away a hundred meters in distance and 30 meters in height so I believe now we have a geofencing of that 
numerical value which is 30 meters in height and 100 meters in distance so if I push it towards 100 meters it will bounce and there you go that's the geofencing and let's see what happens to it oh guess what I have just entered into the second phase of low voltage return home and I see that I got one bar in the battery level indicator so this is the low voltage phase two where it comes back and it should land so there you go descending and there's a beep going on remember in the first phase there's no beep there's no annoying beep so you can still fly around but on the second phase it will come down and you can still redirect it because I'm going to miss my landing pad I'm going to redirect it so I land on the landing pad here and not in the grass there you go it was about to land right about here so that's close enough and there you go guys my flight demo of the Holy Stones HS 720E Just wanted to say that I am very impressed with the quality of the video. Even though it turned into a gloomy day, it still looks fantastic. What I'm more impressed with is the smoothness of the video. The electronic image stabilization is doing amazing things to this video and also the anti-jello mounting is helping out as well. So that'll do it for this video of the Holy Stones HS720E. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Have a great day and we'll see you again next time.